Pickens, um, or the SAPA plan as it's known. Mm -hmm. um, with us are members of the SAPA committee, uh, Denise Prowell, who is the committee coordinator and secretary, um, Don King, who is the city planner and um, also a member of the committee. The city's representative. The city's committee. representative. And John Early, who is a committee member representing Clark's, Clark's Green. Street. Uh, let me uh, preface this by, maybe I should preface this by saying that um, at the present time, there is no pending legislation concerning the, the SAPA plan. We are merely um, revisiting um, something that was presented a number of years ago and um, gathering information to see if there is interest in the city for a reconsideration of the SAPA plan. So, thank you. Thank you. And thank you for inviting us to this caucus. Um, I'm, I'm Denise Prowell. I'm, I'm not a professional planner. Uh, I was the secretary and coordinator, committee coordinator. I set the meeting dates for the group and send out emails uh, uh, for the group, etc. cetera. Um, Don King, the city planner, and I will go over some things. And John, uh, I asked John to be here in case I would say something. If, if I would make a mistake, he could jump in and <laughs> help me out. Oh, and yeah. um, and um, we had some, uh, the, the person from Dunmore who, who wanted to be here couldn't be here uh, because of a death in the family. So. Uh, and since th this is being televised, um, I, I would say that anybody from any of the communities, if they hear me say something that doesn't quite ring true for their community, they should let me know and then I'd, I'd pass the information along to you. Uh, the people in the communities, the officials, have, uh, uh, so many of them have told me that uh, they would, um, if you ever want to have a, a larger meeting, Don said that this should be a very small group today, but if you should ever want to have a large meeting, a larger meeting, um, there are a lot of officials who, who would love to come and, and have a dialogue with you. Um, I'm going to say a little bit about how and why the group formed starting in 2005 and uh, a little bit about comprehensive plans, and then Don will talk about more specifics for Scranton. Um, and I'm going to take 12 minutes on that. <laughs> I'm going to keep to my time, so because we want to get to your questions. Um, in the year 2000, the Pennsylvania Legislature passed Act 67 and 68, making it possible for communities on a voluntary basis to form joint comprehensive plans with their neighboring municipalities, called multi-municipal planning. When a municipality in Pennsylvania does not enter a multi-municipal plan, it must abide by the older Pennsylvania law, which states that each and every municipality, whether urban or rural, must provide slash zone for enough, um, enough land uh, for each and every type of land use. And I'm, I'm saying enough in kind of in quotes because one planner told me that Often it's never enough, and the and it, it just get gets um, pushed farther. Um, this is one of the reasons that sprawling development into the countryside and abandonment of existing urban areas has been so pronounced in Pennsylvania, as evidenced by large shopping malls, industrial parks, etc., in previously undeveloped areas, competing with cities and long-established boroughs. With multi-municipal planning, existing older urban areas can be designated as targeted growth areas through revitalization with the goal of helping to regain population in those areas as well as commercial and employment uses um, while helping rural areas to remain rural 
if that is their desire. And we do have some communities like that. They, they w want to remain more rural and don't want to compete with the urban areas. Uh, other areas can also be designated as growth areas besides existing urban areas, but Don will. Most of the ones in Sapa are existing, uh, existing urban areas, and Don will point out the targeted growth areas in the Sapa plan. They're, they are targeted for investment, both private and public. Um, in 2005, several small groups of communities in the Abingtons wanted to curb sprawl by working on such plans together. The, leaderships, the leadership of the communities gathered for serious discussion about a more effective approach. And the idea came up to ask Scranton and perhaps other valley communities about inclusion in the plan. In July 2005, those involved met with the Pennsylvania DCED, that's the agency that works with such planning groups, and the Abington Council of Governments invited all the municipalities in the county to an August 2005 educational meeting with DCED about multi-municipal planning. And DCED was pleased to see the interest from Scranton in joining a planning group. They, they felt it would be a stronger plan with the city in it. Um, before that, DC, DCED had seen a lot of, during the last few years, DCED had seen a lot of very small planning groups, two or three townships working together and it wasn't cr really creating um, a, a very much of an impact on the region. So, um, and they were listening to some of these rural townships who were saying things like, it, it doesn't seem to be a good idea for us to allow for all this land for, a, say, a commercial district when we have Clark Summit, you know, right next to us and, and other towns down the road that already have downtowns and commercial districts. And so DCED said, well, if you don't want to compete with Clark Summit, you've got to get Clark Summit in the plan. And, uh, and so then it, it grew from there. Um, at, one, at one point, Ransom Township considered joining and then that would have allowed some other uh, valley uh, um, boroughs to next to Ransom to be in the plan. But um, what it ended up as with Scranton in the plan, everybody knew that um, the, the big city would be the centerpiece of the, of the plan, and yet the boroughs would still also be, um, and other commercial areas would still be designated as targeted growth areas. Yeah, basically it opened the door to Dunmore, too. Because yeah. if Dunmore wanted to be in it, but for Scranton, they could not be in it. So. Yeah. And they wanted to be designated as a growth area, much like the city. Mm -hmm. uh, also, in 2003, the Brookings Report had recommended that rural uh, or suburban communities and their neighboring <laughs> cities or, and older boroughs should try to work together on multi-municipal plans. <coughs> And the Brookings Report um, it was about Pennsylvania. It's, it's called Back to Prosperity, and it was done by the Brookings Institution. And um, it, it had a lot of, about how, uh, in order to attract young professionals back to an area, they look for certain quality of life issues, um, um, namely, uh, the, the biggest ones being very, very vibrant urban communities and also access to undeveloped natural areas. Um, and the Brookings Institution found that the way Pennsylvania had been developing was detri detrimental to both the, the urban and the rural areas. And we're, we're actually, in, in our region, one of the, the, the few areas that uh, seems to have a very, very urban um, places right next to very rural places. So the thinking was that this would be the perfect 
region to, to try something like this, to, to do a plan like this. Um, in a multi-municipal planning group, part participating municipalities must either be contiguous or in the same school district. A participant must also be willing and express interest. Otherwise, it will not participate in, in the planning pro effectively in the planning process. The result of those 2005 meetings was that nine of the Abington's communities and Scranton wanted to join. No other valley community near to Scranton expressed interest except Old Forge, which was not contiguous. SAPA was official, officially formed in January 2006, the Scranton Abington's Planning Association, and then Dunmore joined in April of 2006. The groups of municipalities need to be rather small groups so that representatives can meet and make decisions together around a table. And um, if the group gets too big, it's even really hard to, to find a, a good meeting date and the, the staffing gets to be overwhelming. SAPA with 10 municipalities is one of the largest of the many multi-municipal planning groups in Pennsylvania. And SAPA was previously 11 communities, but North Abington did not adopt the plan. The city of Lancaster is also part of an 11 municipality group and also one of the largest in the state. And William, Williamsport is also part of such a planning group. Uh, now I'm going to talk a, a little bit just general about comprehensive plan and the and this SAPA draft uh, land use plan. Um, the, the SAPA draft land use plan map, uh, th there's a copy up there and in your book on page 115, uh, it, it's a comprehensive plan map. And it, it's also available online at sapaplan.com uh, and you go to the plan and then plan mapping. Uh, and it, this map is at the top of the page. And you can zoom in on these maps online. It, it's a good way to zoom in. Um, just for people watching this um, on television, if anybody's going to read the plan from this website, be sure to also read the, the adjustments uh, to, the, to the SAPA plan because uh, they'll, be, they'll appear in the final plan document. A comprehensive plan is intended to show a general view of what a community's public and officials would ideally like to see in their community in the future. It includes sections on general land use, transportation, historic preservation, environmental protection, and more. A comprehensive plan uh, map has been described as a loose shirt. <laughs> um, it fits quite well, but there is wiggle room. Uh, the SAPA map is drawn with a broad brush, so it doesn't show relatively small single land uses such as one or two existing commercial shops among a generally rural area. Usually a comprehensive plan's reach exceeds its grasp. It's understood that a community might not be able to achieve everything uh, stated in the comprehensive plan. But nonetheless, the goal is that it represents the community's ideals so that it can be used as a guide for decision making. And it, can, it also is used as a, uh, a, a way to get funding for what you want in your community. Comprehensive plans are cited on grant applications. Comprehensive planning has two separate phases, first planning and then implementation. Uh, SAPA hired the firm of McCormick Taylor to help with the planning phase. The draft land use plan map is the centerpiece of the plan. To come up with, with this map, the, plan, the planning team from McCormick Taylor listened to the SAPA committee representatives from each municipality to get an idea of the continuing desires of, of each community along with comments by the officials and the public. Each community designed its own part of the plan. To make the draft land use plan map, the planners also studied an existing land use map, the current conditions on the ground, rather than a zoning map. And 
They referred to maps of natural features such as steep slopes and floodplains, etc. The SAPA plan looks 20 years into the future. The planning firm, um, McCormick Taylor, has stated there is enough, okay, there's enough of each of the uses indicated on the map to last far more than 20 years. And now I'm going to hand it over to Don. He'll talk about the growth areas well, and, uh, and other things. Yeah. For, I just wanted to talk about uh, Scranton. Now we, we, we do have an adopted comprehensive plan that we adopted in March of 93. And th that planning effort started in the late 80s. Uh, the Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Code, which is the law in Pennsylvania that allows cities to have zoning, amongst other things, requires that comprehensive plans shall be reviewed at least every 10 years so we're we're a little over the little over the time frame there so we have a plan put together here with uh, 10 other municipalities that's that's done uh, when you look back at our adopted plan and this plan the goals are, are pretty much the same strengthen the neighborhoods strengthen employment make uh, Scranton the centerpiece of the region so that's yeah if, if I would say this from a Scranton point of view let's say this from a Scranton point of view that if you this is a cheap way to get to meet your obligations for a comprehensive plan and if you don't, then you're going to have to do one, your, you know, if you don't want to adopt this, then you're going to have to go back to the drawing board and do one of your own, which would probably be close to a half million. Well, I, I, I said at least, we spent $100,000 in 93 when, yeah. we, when we did it. Yeah, and this was what, 350000 About 300000 uh, all told for this APA plan. So you have a $300,000 plan that also took advantage of a lot of hundreds of volunteer hours that went into it too, because we spent a lot of, we, we helped out McCormick Taylor in doing the plan, so there were some savings in that that they didn't have to do. And I would also point out that the bi-county comprehensive plan that Lackawanna Luzerne County had entered into assumed SAPA was going to be in place. So, I mean, so a lot of assumptions were built, and one of them was that this would take care of the county's plan. You know, our 40% of Lackawanna County would be, you know, the SAPA, which is about 40% of the county, was going to be placed into the comprehensive plan. And I think this also assumed that this is going to get the city off the hook for having to spend money itself. Correct. You know, for its comprehensive yeah. plan. It, I mean, it, it, procedural wise or law wise, it kind of kills two birds with one stone. It, it, brings us into compliance with the 10 year. And it also, there's another section that when a county does adopt a comprehensive plan, which Lackawanna County has, the municipal comprehensive plans which are adopted shall generally be consistent with the adopted plan. So had we, if we adopt this plan, we will be consistent with the, with the county's plan. So regulatory wise, we kill two birds with one stone. Uh, if the plan is adopted, the next step would be to move into implementation. The main implementation is, is a new zoning ordinance or a revised zoning ordinance. Again, our zoning ordinance is a little, well, it's 96, so it's basically, basically uh, 20 years old. There's just a lot of things, you know, dealing with it every day, every day something seems to come up that you didn't think about when that ordinance was put together. And, things that you know, we have gas drilling now we have windmills now uh, in our downtown we have a, a large uh, revitalization going on with downtown living the buildings being converted into apartments 20 years ago if you said that the Connell building was going to be an apartment building I would have said you're nuts but it just the ordinance it needs to be updated just to reflect the, the changing times. Uh, well, um, may, may I say something? You correct me if I'm wrong. 
I think that one of the things as elected officials of Scranton, I think you need to feel comfortable understanding is that what your zoning is now will not have to be changed to conform with this plan. In other mm. words, you're, you're not being, you know, some of the more unsavory activities that every municipality has to accommodate, whether it's landfills and all these other things, you, you're, you're not being expected to pick up anything more than what you already have. So I, I don't mm. want anyone to think that the people in the Abingtons are going to maintain their pristine, you, you know, vistas and bucolic mm. visions of the future, and you guys are going to be stuck with things that you don't want. What your zoning provides for now is c complies with this plan. As I said, you're not mm. being dumped on, and I, I, I think everyone should understand that. And I'm not always certain that was understood before. Well, I mean, well yeah. Oh. Well, I think one of the core values that was agreed upon by the committee at the beginning was that each and every municipality would maintain their own their own zoning, their own zoning ordinance, their own zoning board, that this wasn't meant to be a, a cooperative zoning effort. It was a, it's a cooperative planning effort. But the zoning is something that's unique to each municipality, and each municipality felt strongly like we do that that's something we want to maintain in-house. Uh, and just looking back, the, the forward in this plan maybe says it, says it best. While the benefits of multi-municipal planning are numerous, prudent, prudence dic dictates that all aspects of this plan need to be fully understood by all participants. Some of the more important aspects of the plan include the SAPA plan shall not infringe on any lawful rights granted to any member municipality that said member retain prior to its participation in the association. All decisions relative to participating in this plan now and in the future are the sole dominion of the elected leadership of each member of municipality. Each member community will continue to maintain its own zoning hearing board. Each member community reserves the right to withdraw from the SAPA plan at any time. The autonomy of each and every member community shall be permanently protected and maintained. And like I said, that was, those were things that came out at the very beginning of the meetings that every municipality agreed on and wanted to see happen. Uh, you know, some other benefits that being a, a member of a multi-municipal planning association or group gives you points with uh, state on funding. Uh, for grants. For grants and things like that. Uh, that's. I think we covered the. Yeah, your, the fav your, fa yeah, your favorite yeah. under state law. Yeah. It, it's the equivalent yeah. of like on the Civil Service Commission test having a veteran's preference. If, yeah. if you check the box that says you're part of a multiple municipal plan, that gives yeah. you points in terms of the scoring. We want to leave some time for, for your questions. I think we. We talked a little longer than we planned. Uh, okay, uh, I do have a couple of very quick questions. Um, would the city experience any loss of independence of operation by becoming a member or by joining this association? No. Uh, what what we'd be if legislation came down, we'd be asking you to adopt a comprehensive plan. Comprehensive plans in Pennsylvania really carry no legal weight. They're supposed to be a background document. When you develop your zoning ordinance, your zoning ordinance is the regulatory document, and that would be ours and ours alone. Uh, I guess, uh, prior to the meeting. Mm -hmm. By adopting the plan, can this be forced upon the city that, okay, you're part of the plan, now you're responsible for 
No. 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 You know, the, 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 of, yeah. The plan, the plan itself raises no legal responsibilities to the city. Anything like that would have to be acted upon by your, by the council, just like they, just like it would now. It, you know, I imagine so something would, like that would be a, an agreement, and that would have to be agreed to by by council. It would have to mayor. be agreed to by the right. municipalities uh, at that time. Yeah. Uh, thank you. The the second question I had was. Um, what is what would be the cost to the city in implementation and future operation? Well, so the, the, the only it, if we went right out and did a whole new zoning ordinance from scratch, at the, the last time I checked, I talked to a couple of consultants. Something like that might cost thirty or forty thousand dollars. But it, again, it's also something we could do in house and just make adjustments to our existing ordinance uh, what we would really like to do is if this was adopted and we go back to DCD and try and get funding being part of a multi-municipal plan like we said makes us a priority level and they've told us that there'd be some some money available for them to help with the implementation and you're the only member of municipality that actually has a train trained and recognized planner on staff. It will cost more money, I dare say, for the other municipalities than it will cost for Scranton. Other than that, I think the dues were set at about $200, $200 a year. $200 a year that we year. use for advertising and things like that for the meetings. And we do have a rotational system where each municipality is expected to host a meeting once in a while. So that would probably be another responsibility. We were here twice, maybe during the planning yeah. stage. Um, they were the only questions I had, Mr. Rogan. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have a number of questions. And just for the record, I did vote against this plan last time it was up. Mm -hmm. um, and I still do have a number of concerns. Um, first, were there any changes made since council last revisit, council last voted on this plan? No. So it's, it's the exact same. It's the exact, exact same, same yeah. Okay. And regarding the cost, um, you mentioned thirty to forty thousand. What would that cost cover? And would that be a one-time cost or that that would be a one-time cost to hire a consultant to help us draft a new zoning ordinance? Well, with or without this plan, you yeah. have to do that. Okay. Yeah. Eventually, we're going to have to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. But that's that would be that's the that's the real implementation cost of the, the, you do a comprehensive plan, the, like I said, the regulatory ordinance is the zoning ordinance. Right. One of the areas in Lackawanna County that seemed to have the most development over the last 10 years was Dixon City. Um, why isn't Dixon City involved with this plan? Um, did they opt out or were uh, they not invited? No. They, they were invited to the initial meetings uh, all, all the communities in the county were invited to the initial meetings and uh, uh, like I, I, I said earlier, it, they, each community has to express interest since it's a, a, a voluntary thing. So the communities that we got interest from, that's what, who we uh, ended up planning with. Say, I, I just think, but unfortunately, Dixon City has been the hub of commerce, not yeah. Scranton. Um, well, I, and, and, and years, I agree. I would love for them to have been part, but they weren't interested at right. the time. Right. It, it's just a, a. It seems a rather large omission from from the area that, that they're not part of the plan. Mm -hmm. um, who would make decisions on, say, Scranton were to join in with Sapa? If a decision were to be made, who would make the decision? Would it be a governing body, or would Sapa? You know, say if it was an amendment to the map or any issue within SAPA, would that be done? Would each municipality have one vote on the board, or would it be proportional based on population? Well, I, th I think it would be each member municipality has to vote on it. I mean, just like we would be coming to you asking you to adopt a plan, if we were going to make changes to it, we would be back before council again asking them and each of the other governing bodies to, to act on it. Right. Yeah. I, I, 
when we had all these meetings and the give and take that went into making this plan, we never actually had a, you know, a vote of like five to four or something like that. We always reached consensus because we always assumed that, you know, that, that if, if, peop if we constructed a plan that didn't meet the, you know, the needs of the munici municipality, that if the municipality identified a problem that they had, we accepted on its face that it was a problem and we needed to respect it. There never was a time when Don was on the losing side of any vote. Yeah. Or any. Or any. Or any, or any, yeah, or any if, if there was anything that, you know, if a, any of the municipality said, we'd like you to change this for our municipality, it was, it was done. That was, it's, it's your municipality, it's your plan, that's what you want, that's what you get. Right. And you mentioned that the zoning, you know, zoning boards wouldn't lose any power and Scranton right now currently has a, a pretty good zoning board, a great yeah. zoning board, actually. Mm -hmm. They do an excellent job researching yeah. um, what's going on. If this were to be implemented, if this map were to be implemented, mm -hmm. would this have any credence in a zoning hearing at all? Um, if somebody was applying for a variance and it didn't conform with the SAPA map, w would that be, could that no, be used? No, again, in Pennsylvania, comprehensive plans carry no legal weight. If someone wanted to challenge the whole zoning ordinance, you know, if we did, if we had a zoning ordinance that was totally contrary to the map, somebody might be able to to make some hay out of it. But technically, in Pennsylvania, a comprehensive plan carries no legal weight. It's a guidance document only. But so, you, it's, you, you, but you might have a problem that yours is old, you know, and yeah. we all had we all had that problem too. Right. Yeah. So, if you had like an attack on your whole zoning law. The first one would be, as a matter of fact, their, you know, their comprehensive plan was under 1993. You know, that was the last millennium. <laughs> My concern, and I know the concern of a lot of residents mm -hmm. were when we looked at this a few years ago, was if you look at that map um, and you look in the area, you look in Scranton, you see a lot of reds, you see a lot of yellows, um, high density residential. Um, and then when you go outside of Scranton, you have areas you know, you have a lot of recreational areas, mm -hmm. green space, things of that nature. And obviously, you know, the, the people that are in those areas want to keep urban sprawl away, mm -hmm. you know, keep certain elements out of their neighborhoods. And I know the concern of a lot of residents and of myself is that, for instance, say somebody wanted to build a housing project in mm -hmm. one of those areas that are in green or a methadone clinic, mm -hmm. that they would be told, well, according to this map, that can only be done in, you know, the yellow or darker areas, and that would have to be in Scranton. Well, again, if that was another municipality saying that, all they could do is refer them to us, but they would still be subject to our zoning ordinance. Right. So they couldn't do something like that without it being in conformance with our ordinance. But the reason you see those, because we have an infrastructure that was built here that supported a population of 140,000 people. Now we're almost getting down to half of that. So we, we want to have people build in our high density neighborhoods, you know, where there's, we're going around tearing houses down every year. We need to get back right. rebuilding and reusing some of those lots. And we have a lot of empty factory spaces. We need to get some industry in there. Right. And we certainly want development in yes. the city. We just want, want the right kind of development. But, yes. And, 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 and Obviously, the, my concern is that the officials in these other municipalities would use this plan as a shell for saying, well, we can't allow this in our municipality. Um, you know, they'll say, well, even look at the SAPA plan. It doesn't, you know, it allows for that in Scranton. I guess that's my concern, and that's, that's the hump that I'm trying to get yeah. over. And, um, uh, you know, could we guarantee that some other municipality might try and say that? I, possibly that could happen right. but we would still have our own zoning ordinance and we wouldn't allow something to happen here that wasn't in conformance with our own ordinance right well, that's all the questions I have for now um, I will review all of this again yeah. um, and I think one of the issues and I know mr. McGough brought this up was the cost um, and and that again that's that's one of the bigger issues um, that we have to look at just to make sure mm -hmm. there are no continued costs look moving forward but thank you, for, thank you for coming in. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Mr. Wexler? Yes, I just want to follow up on something uh, Councilman Rogan brought up just for my uh, education. What happens to the Scranton Planning Commission? Nothing. 
it, we still have the Scranton Planning we still, Commission. We still have we still have we our still own have planning commission. City planner. Yeah. Yes. And it's yeah. it, it it's a recommending body still, but it's operating under the SAPA laws. If if this well, I, we would be operating. We would be using this document as our guidance document. But in all other respects, it would operate the, the same way that it does. Uh, the Planning Commission, besides making recommendations to your body on certain things like vacated streets and things, uh, reviews and approves subdivision plans and land development plans, all that would continue just like it does now. Because I know a lot of things go from Scranton to Lackawanna County has a Planning Commission yeah. also. Is this another group that would have to be involved in it? Would there be three stages no, now? No, no. The, the, the state planning code requires a lot of actions. If a city has a comprehensive plan and a county has a comprehensive plan, certain actions have to be referred to both for uh, comment. But that wouldn't apply to SAPA. They wouldn't be, that wouldn't be a third layer that you would have to go back to. The thing that came out of this tonight that I'm more concerned with is the review of the zoning ordinance more than this plan um, uh, that's I mean, know, having, that's, having that's served, the nitty -gritty. Having served on the zoning board right. um, I'm quite familiar with it yep. and there are a lot of cases that either should never be at the zoning board or a lot of cases that should be at the zoning board right that don't happen right they now don't, right and I agree and with Mr. Rowe, like I said a, more we, we more and more of that stuff board. comes up every day um, I'm more concerned with that than than this plan yeah, um, the, when the new ordinance would be reviewed, how long is it that uh, from review to acceptance to implementation? I, I'm going to guess it's going to be, it would take at least a year to maybe 18 months by the time there's a prescribed set of hearings and things like that. They, they take a while to put together, but a year to 18 months. When you go third, all the questions get asked, so thank you very yeah. much. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Um, from what I looked at, I guess the previous council had a concern about the financial aspect of this plan. If I'm hearing you correctly, the only money that we would have to put forward is $200 a year. Am I correct? I, I think that would be the only money that we would be required to right. spend. I mean, and we would hope to move forward with, with the zoning ordinance, but... Okay. And from what I understand from what you just said, we have to um, update the zoning ordinances anyway, correct? Well, we have to update the comprehensive plan every 10 years. The zoning, board, the zoning ordinance needs to be updated. Or we, we're not required by any law to update it, but it, it needs it because it's old. Okay. So we have to update the comprehensive plan. If we were to join SAPA, that would um, possibly save us $500,000? Whatever the, whatever the cost of a comprehensive plan would be, I would say at least a hundred. Okay, and if we don't join, we're going to have to do the comprehensive plan anyways, we're gonna and we're going to have to pay a hundred thousand yes. dollars that we don't have. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, do you think if Scranton were to join SAPA, would um, it prompt other communities to get involved? Would that spur more interest, or? Well, I mean, Scranton already has joined SAPA. Right, I mean, but I mean, if but, we were uh, to. I, I'd have to say no. I mean, I think in the beginning in 2005 when this effort started and with a lot of work by Denise, there was a lot of outreach to the other municipalities and the ones that aren't part of the plan just weren't interested. Now, mm -hmm. has that changed since then? Maybe, but uh, I haven't heard of any. I, I, <clears throat> a letter was sent to, to uh, each municipality uh, and and we were told really do not coax any municipality to be a member of this because if you have to coax any municipality it they're not going to really participate uh um very much and um so one letter was sent out and the people who came to the the meeting the people who showed interest that's that's who we planned with maybe if if communities were Reapproached, they might be interested. I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. The and only community that would probably be in this, if given the chance, would have been Old Forge. They were very interested. Old Forge was interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah but interested. we could. We they weren't contiguous with anybody. Yeah. Once Ransom 
looked at it and then dropped out. Right. There was no, there was no, no yeah. one reached all four. Yeah. Okay. The, the law it, says that they have to be contiguous municipalities. Okay. Yeah, you so can't leave a gap in yeah, there. So right. we, Dunmore only got in through the reach from Scranton. No one else touches Dunmore except the city of Scranton. Okay. And just to clarify, there's no, this plan has no effect on the planning commission or the zoning board? No. No. Okay. Uh, I appreciate you coming in. Thank you. Mr. McGough, before we finish, I do have one follow-up. Mr. Gohan asked a good question, and the answer was that, you know, because of joining SAPA, we wouldn't have to revise our own plan. How would SAPA be picking up the cost of that plan? Well, if it would cost the city approximately $500,000, I would assume it would cost closer to a million to do for, for this much land. Well, that's my estimate. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I'm right. It's but a, the, a six-figure number, obviously. Yeah. The, the plan is done, though. It's been paid, mostly paid for by DCED, uh, some grants from the Scranton Area Foundation. And the, the Willery the Foundation. Willery Foundation. Um, also yeah. PennDOT. PennDOT, because uh, uh, there's a transportation element to it. Yeah. And, and the communities themselves. Yeah, yeah and I, I, Scranton's put in, I think, 34000 34, something. 34000 uh, again, maybe just clarification say, so basically what you're saying is that the SAPA plan would almost be a substitute for right. the comprehensive plan. It, the comprehensive plan. It, it would, yeah. it so would that the be, planning has already been done, it's, it's been we done. would merely adapt it to our need. Yeah. Our right. You would basically take it off the shelf and say this is our plan. Mm -hmm. And okay. then that will also bring 40% of Lackawanna County into alignment with the Bi-County Comprehensive Plan. It because serves, I didn't mean to. oh no, that's fine. Each but, community, uh, th this serves as their comprehensive okay. plan. Yeah, understood. That's it. Yeah, yeah we, our, just our plan to make was 93, sure. so we were looking to use it up on Clark Screen to satisfy our obligations. Ooh. Denise, Ooh. with all the, the matching grants and stuff, what was it, like 350? Uh, I mean, it, it was about uh, three hundred thousand dollars. The the plan cost about three hundred thousand dollars, not including uh, the the Willery Foundation and that, and Scranton Area Foundation. They helped uh, the the communities. So that's uh, another fifty uh, thousand. So I mean, so you're talking six figures. Well, in in lieu of if Scranton were to not join in instead of going through the process of spending all that money to create our own plan, couldn't we just take this work that was done, chop it off and edit how we like and have it for Scranton revised plan? I guess that would be for Mr. King. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I think we were, I think Cindy Campbell said everyone had to enact the same plan word for word, didn't she? Um, I. I, yeah, I think he's t uh, you're talking about. Yeah, I, I think I mean I, I, I think I know what you're saying. Right. Can we pull out our? Could we possibly? I mean, that's, uh, I mean, a lot of the plan talks about the different municipalities. So there, there's things that wouldn't make sense for just Scranton. Just like there, if Scranton doesn't participate, there's a lot of things in here that doesn't make sense for the for the rest of the municipalities. Right. If, if Scranton wasn't in uh, the group with the other communities, the, uh, especially the Abingtons areas, they would um, be, they would have to redo a plan and they would have to allow for much more, as I said earlier, the rural areas would have to allow for much more um, and you, you could say competing development of commercial and office industrial, et cetera. Yeah. Industrial parks, et cetera. Well, in answer and to your question, we kind of asked it in reverse that after Scranton wasn't interested, could, could we said, like, we asked it, could we edit it down and just make it? And the state officials said, you know what, it really was built with all municipalities right. in line. It was one thing to lose North Abington Township which is the area up around the Lackawanna State Park, but they said to lose Scranton or Scranton to lose the Abingtons, that was just, you know, bridge too far as far as they were concerned. It couldn't be enacted without the city. It couldn't be implemented. 
Anything else? That's it. Um, I, I also wanted to say something, something was asked about the, the future uh, um, and reviews of developments. And some groups in their uh, implementation phase and in, as in continuing into the future do have committees that meet and they review some, some, of, the, some of them only review large scale developments. I remember that from the implementation uh, documents that, uh, and so they would give their opinion on a, um, if we organized the implementation that way, they would give their opinion on the, on large scale developments. Uh, I believe that's all the questions we have, and again, I would on behalf of council, thank you for your participation in this caucus. Um, we will discuss and we will um, talk with the members of the administration uh, to see if this is something that we wish to turn into a, you know, a formal um, resolution uh, for adoption. Thank, Thank you, you for having it. us. Thank, Thank you, you very much. It. And, Thank and you. If, it, if, it, if it did go to the next, that next step, I would have anticipated we'd be, have to have a few yes. more <laughs> of these kinds of meetings. Thank you. Thank you.